field trip to Harper's Ferry in the fifth grade and it was just mental like the the story uh, was just really crazy they had people dressed up like it's one of those places where you go and like everyone's dressed up uh, like colonial uh, or not colonial I guess because it's like the 1860s um, like there was a guy war reenactment style yeah, there was a dude giving Frederick Douglass speeches as Frederick Douglass. Like, it was really neat. Um, but yeah, John Brown was a really cool and really terrifying person. Interesting story. Yeah, we had, I, it came out last night on, I guess it's Showtime is where it's releasing. Dude, he hacked people like up with like swords and stuff. He and his sons did pretty pretty crazy yeah i mean i think the conviction behind uh what they were doing is really admirable yeah it's nice when you know illness and like a good cause align for uh you know right? because it's he like was the, absolutely like like the bible it's like the bible got him going at like 150 miles an hour yeah. and then ra- racism came by one day yeah, and was like, "Fuck that black friend of yours," and he was like, "Jesus said something about saying mean things about my friends." And yeah, and also like enslaving people, redirected. Well, yeah, big picture for sure. Yeah, he was he was not about it. It's actually like sad. Like uh, I always equated the Harper Ferry raid with like the Alamo or something. It's like, oh. I know for sure. And they don't talk yeah. about it at all like that. Yeah. So I'm glad that this story is hopefully going to really bring some, you know, some light to it. There, there's been a few stories and movies that have come out recently. I think Emperor was talking about that and some of the other yeah. ones uh, were starting to free, uh, free really state of cool. Jones. Yeah. I know that part of Mississippi It is a hellhole. I've never been down. We only went to one. Uh, I've only been there one time, and it was to go down to Akron to our Akron. friends to go. Uh, I thought that was Alcorn, rather. Okay. I was like, I've never heard of that state. Yeah. And uh, we went and watched it's, the football game down there. It's really pretty. It was. It was very scenic. Lots of woods. Yeah. Charity. My wife was not super uh, chill down there. <laughs> we went to get yeah. some food in some spots and she was feeling uncomfortable. And I was like, I don't know uh, what you're so worried about. But I'm no, sure I stood out like honestly, a sort of Honestly, it's like most of those areas are predominantly African-American now. I know. I think that was why she was worried. 
Because <laughs> I am not. <laughs> oh, I like uh, Vicksburg a lot. It's a cool town. But they were chill. It was a lot of fun. Dude, everyone in Mississippi is so nice. Like, except for when they're not. And that was where you kind of grew up was near Jackson, right? Yeah, I was born in Jackson. That's like where my family is from. My grandparents live in Brookhaven, which is just south on 55. There you go. It's really nice. nice. It's like near it, lots of trees, man. It's really beautiful. Yeah, we uh, flew down there back pre uh, COVID. BC before, yeah, before the COVID. But uh, it was fun. They're in a new spot now, so we'll get to go to a new place to go check it out to go cheer them on. Uh, nice. I think Alcorn's like a historic uh, black college. Yeah, it's HBC for sure. It was fun. Uh, I think they were good. They won. Uh, I got hype. My defense played well. He got a nursing degree there, so it's not all black. Yeah, it's not uh, black only. Like it's not a B O C, it's a God uh, knows Miss- yeah. historically black. We got to correct that because God knows Mississippi has had its problems with uh, segregated institutions of higher learning. Yeah, and there were plenty of uh, walks. White only colleges, uh, yeah, all of which them is why you had to do like the HBC. Time. But Did, they had to bring the National Guard in to segregate or to desegregate that shit. Yeah, talking walk, walk, walk. That's a whites only college right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, so Ole Miss just changed, like stopped letting people, or their their mascot was like a Confederate general. Basically. Yeah, the, the name Colonel. of the college, like I didn't even realize this for the longest time uh, that like you have Mississippi State, normally every other state you have like Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, yeah, you know, Ohio and Ohio State, the state's name, the original college and then like a state college. There was like a vocational or ag college or something like that. The transition Mississippi state is the ag college. It's like the OSU. But there's not a Mississippi that's the school. Mississippi College. Like University of Mississippi. And I'm pretty sure Ole Miss is the University of Mississippi. For sure. But they don't go by that. They go by Ole. Yeah, Ole Miss University of Mississippi. There's no school, no other school anywhere in the nation that calls themselves Ole. And that's a sign that you're, I feel like, racist. They're like trying to hold it out there. Dude, I mean, like, they, they old, lost. the old, the old Mississippi. They We're not lost. talking about new Mississippians. Something that's very telling of that school is they lost a huge chunk of like their football team in the Civil War, and like most <laughs> <of the> students, <laughs> right? Like they've been around a long time. Honestly, if the Blind Side was about there. If slavery had never happened and uh, the South wasn't, you know, so backwards for so long, like Ole Miss, some of those older colleges could have been like Tulane, like those could have been Ivies, but no. Nope. Right. Well, they wanted, you know, they're just, they're going for a slower, longer it's development. Real hot down there. Like, you don't want to have to do any of your own physical labor. And why pay someone when you could just, you know, buy a person? They, uh, they were having so much trouble figuring things out. They didn't want to muddy up the process by involving people of, <laughs> you know, differing backgrounds. Yeah, that is insanity. Now we just kind of do that with uh, our prison population across the country. Yeah. You think they're isolating uh, the populations? Systematically, uh, you know, like targeted, imprisoned, and forced to work for free. Yes. I could see that. The new Jim Crow. That... uh... They have prisons that are specifically like predominantly, we'll have to look into this, but predominantly like one race or the other, like they 
they channel certain populations for certain type of work. Dude, fucking Angola down in Louisiana. Like we have textiles uh, back east. And uh, if you know what I mean, some of these prisoners are particularly high risk. They need to go to our supermax over here where we do textiles. Okay, so Angola um, is a like a workhouse prison in Mississippi or in Louisiana. And mm -hmm. it is widely considered to be the worst place. And it's where 71% of inmates are serving a life sentence there. And there are 5,100 inmates as of 2010. Um, I'm pulling it up right now. Louisiana State Penitentiary. They don't tell it? you. Okay. 76% uh, black, 24% white. Wikipedia is struggling over here. They got this is the, one of the most aggressive ones I've seen. Feel bad. Ads? I love you, Wikipedia. Dude, I've been getting when we get when we get ads. I will send it your way, brother. I My sister, you know I get, they I them Wikipedia. We could, like we get them. I give them three dollars once a year. There you go. When they then. We're good. An email, and they're like, most people won't ever give us any money, uh, and the, which is why we send our contributors, you know, this email. Please give us another three dollars. It's like, okay, here's your three bucks. I'm so sorry. Well, you're good. Uh, You've made this... me seem like a more interesting person a thousand times over. You are, you know, you're a great person. And I'm well, uh, glad you're part Wikipedia. of the podcast. That way the podcast is great uh, through you because I clearly have not done my part this year or else they wouldn't be sending me this bright red. Dude, I uh, get the same one. Reminder. Okay. So don't worry. Yeah, it's just because I'm not logged in. You're right. So what's this, uh, what's the population on the Angola prison? Largest maximum security prison in the US, huh? That's not bad. Yeah. And it's like a active farm. And so the inmate like baseball there, or like sports farm where they like train no, people, like, bring them up or like, hard, uh, like heart plant agriculture. It is, it is a plantation prison. Oh, really? Yeah. Operations. Like, Here we go. Let's see. Slavery. Farming inmates cultivate harvest and process an array of crops that make the facility self-supporting crops include cabbage, corn, cotton, Cotton. That one seems that one seems problematic. Cotton. Strawberries, cool. that one seems problematic. Uh, okra, it's onions, peppers, soybeans, squash, tomatoes, and wheat. I bet the company didn't put this in here. As of 2010, the prison has 2,000 head of cattle. Much of the herd is sold at markets markets for beef. That's good. Each year, the yeah. prison produces four million pounds of vegetable crops. Inmates also breed and train the horses used at Angola for field work. Trustees are mounted to supervise workers in the field. Yeah. That sounds really... They ride around with back. shotguns. Yeah, they ride around know. with horseback with shotguns. It is... Dude, Doesn't that sound like it cool is hand a, Luke? They started it in 1835 during slavery, and they have operated it. It's the only plantation in the deep south that never changed how they operate people still shackled they probably beat them a little less than they used to but i'm sure the beating still happened so that says that in 2010 the angola prison horse sale was initiated at the time of the annual rodeos so at the annual rodeo they have now or at least in 2010 they did uh, angola prison horse sale jesus they're, I wonder they're if they're chair, selling their train. Gruesome Gertie. They're trained. I wonder if they're selling their trained horses that are trained in like barrel racing and chasing down prisoners and or you know Dude, anyone I else. To you, none of those gun, <laughs> or none of those horses are gun shy. How do you think they describe the skill set of the horse? Uh, I mean, like part rodeo, part enforcer. Because what do you? Uh, 
correction it's hole called, rodeo. So they would probably be, you know, they do barrel, barrel races and, you know, like to the fence chases. They haven't struck by. Actually, and, I don't uh, think Angola even has a goddamn fence, man. Like you we just have a topographical it. topographical map over here. Let me check it out real quick. Wow. Okay. So this is a very large, very large track here, all along the river too. Yeah. And they have an inner lake, Lake Killarney, Killarney, or yeah. Killarney. Wow, that's a intimidating place. Hey, the Angolite editor. That's crazy. Wilbert Redu. They have a radio station too. Warden till 2016. Man, he's Burl Kane. They're like, you can't use the chair anymore. He's like, you take an old Gertie from me. I retire. Smile. I am smiling. If you had to venture, I tilt my head down. My smile's at least halfway up. Think he's? Do you think he's tilting his head up like that for the neck, or that's just like how he rolls? Oh God! The cameraman was like, "Can you? Uh, can you give me a high chin? High chin, low eyes. What do you say, Burl?" Someone wrote a book called "Sexual Slavery: A Memoir." Uh, published in 2010 by Wilbert Rideau, an inmate in, at Angola from 1961 to 2000. Uh, he states that slavery was commonplace in Angola with perhaps a quarter of the population in bondage. Throughout the 60s and early 70s, uh, the New York Times states that weak inmates served as sex slaves who were raped, gang raped, and traded and sold like cattle. Rideau, Rideau so that counts. The slaves it's only... It's interesting died. that this counts as part of the operation of the master. prison. Yeah, it probably highly encouraged by Jesus. They have a rodeo though, so and a program for fathers. Uh, we'll get I'll to the rodeo. Fathers. So, what about this uh, inmate education? I feel there's not as much of that as it there seems like there is. I bet you can go. Uh, they got literacy classes. Ayo. I bet they're not phenomenal. I don't know. You know, I bet uh, Burl would say otherwise. I bet the selection in the library is pretty sparse. Right. So, they, not great reading know, materials. They got a GED program. But like if 70 something percent of the population are lifers, I could see Hicks in uh, Louisiana. I've lived in Louisiana, Shreveport for a very long time growing up. So. They actually call themselves, the Hicks in Louisiana call themselves coon asses. Uh, so oh, yeah? I imagine a lot of those people would be like, well, fuck them. Let's not give them any books or any funding. So I doubt these classes are great. I also went to public schools, though, in Louisiana, and they were pretty cool. The greatest governor in American history, arguably, is from Louisiana. Huey Long. There you go. They wrote a book. I'm not, fam I'm not familiar with Huey. Uh, All the King's Men was a famous book written about Huey Long. He was awesome, man. Like Standard Oil basically ran Louisiana until he became the governor. And he uh, like started taxing the shit out of the oil companies, like tore power away from him. He was also a crook. But he built roads, bridges, Spoiler alert. Uh, schools, and he in, was ultimately murdered in the state capitol by a um, disgruntled, ah, I don't have the story right, someone, they definitely had like oh, a previous right there, approach. right there at the end. I bet we could look, I bet Wikipedia knows. Hang on. Yeah. Fascinated. What's going on after after they get their GED? I was curious about what opportunities they have in their vocational 
uh, skills program over here. I guarantee you Huey Long was the person that instituted this and it has not changed since. They're like, you get whatever Huey said you could have. And I'm he, sure we'll get to that. Get to we can, we can, uh, they have technology, carpentry, that. culinary arts, graphic communications, horticulture, and welding. They also partnered in the 90s with the New Orleans Baptist Theo Theological Seminary to offer prisoners the chance to earn accredited bachelor degrees in ministry. It's interesting the only advanced program is in Jesus and uh, everything else is practical skills that are used for producing things at the prison. Uh Bruce Sabin wrote his doctoral dissertation evaluating the moral development among those college students. Very interesting. I I do think, like, look at, I mean, you can look at a, so many prison inmates who have had access to education and become, like, amazing contributors to society, even, even some monsters, dude, like... Uh, Oh, who's the guy who cut his mom's head off and fucked her head? Mm, he was not coming to me. Really, I don't know. You know. He was portrayed really well in Mind Hunter. He's like the big guy, mustache, deep voice. Uh, Ed Kelper, helper. Yeah, Edmund Kelper or something like that. Kemper. Ed Ed Kemper. Ed Kemper. Dude, he and if you've ever listened to an audiobook. Like, are you listening to audiobooks with any frequency? You've probably listened to an audiobook read by Ed Kemper. He has recorded. Oh, he's got a voice, dude. Children's dude, books, I'm sure. He got really into uh, audiobooks and recording them. That's like one of the things he like volunteers in, behind bars to do. He has recorded over 5,000 audiobooks. I haven't heard any of them. I haven't gotten a chance to check them out or support them or anything, but I'll, I'll definitely look into it. Well, it's like a lot of the ones uh, that they, there's only like one or two options of like reader or whatever. And so like if you find <laughs> a audio, like he did all the Star Wars, uh, early paperback Star Wars stuff from like the late 80s, early 90s. And George was like, and it's Ed, or I have Chewbacca read the whole thing for you. Holy crap. He used an estimated 4 million feet of tape to record all of his audiobooks. Ed did? Yeah. Interesting. I bet that's not all I did with that tape. No. Hey, check, uh, check out how the prison cool. started over here in 1835. State inmates were held in a jail in New Orleans. The first Louisiana State Penitentiary, located on the intersection of Six and Laurel in Baton Rouge, was modeled on a prison in Weathersfield, Connecticut. Weathersfield, Weathersfield, okay. Connecticut. Oh, they up leased in, up up in the north. prison and its prisoners to McCatton Pratt and Company, a private company. Dude, the first private prison. During the there Civil War, Union soldiers occupied... Oh, hey, that's sad. Some of the prison camps in the Civil War, some of like the saddest stories on both sides, not to sound like Trump, like so they like really took out war atrocities on one another. So like they legitimately hated, hated each other and they treated each other like dog shit in these prisons. But they did that. So the, the Union soldiers occupied the prison in Baton Rouge in 1869 during Reconstruction era. Shortly after, Samuel Lawrence James, Confederate major, received the military lease to the future prison property along the Mississippi River, as we checked out earlier. He tried to produce cotton with free labor, free labor of African Americans. <laughs> it's interesting how they phrase that free labor of African man. There's a term for that. I can't, it's not coming to mind right now, but he turned it instead of it being a plantation, he turned it into a black prison. There's a term for this. No, it's not called a black prison. It's called uh slavery. Sla well, so slavery. That's what it's called. It's called slavery. When 
the, when we uh, abolish at- slavery, we abolish slavery for everyone but prisoners. You can you can still work for nothing, be forced to work for nothing if you are a a prisoner. Hmm. I'll plug a book. There's a really great book about it. The New Jim Crow. A book about it. Uh, by Michelle Alexander. If oh yeah. Further reading on the American prison industrial complex. Have you finished it yet? Uh, I read it last year. It's really good. There's. That's a that's a more recent overhead. This place is crazy, dude. Yeah, there are some great documentaries about Angola also. There's one about like the radio station there that I found incredibly interesting. So the sex slavery was the thing that he uh, wrote that John Lomax about. went there in the 30s to record folk music and the Angola recordings are incredible. John Lomax is an American like hero. We, he's like the only reason we have uh folk music or a lot of it survived like there'd be no bob dylan without john lomax going all over the deep south with a tape recorder in the 30s he's like a jewish guy just like driving around looking for old bluesmen this is kind of like what we were talking about the other day about uh music ip law and copyright and how if you really went back like it's they always set up timelines that you look back to and they're like okay the cutoffs 30 years ago or the cutoff is mm, let's say let's call it 70 years what year is that no i don't know there was i think we had a land run back then let's just set it right after that and uh we'll not talk about uh the records before that but keep real clean records after that his son, or his grandson, I think, ended up being the manager of Towns Van Zant and like Steve Earle and a bunch of like really crazy good uh, Texas songwriters later on. So like the way they write it down here too, very involved in music. How they start the uh, Texas Folklore Society. It's like the. Uh, the maesters and song of ice and fire how they like write the history they're like let's uh let's uh let's also take control of the history of folklore and storytelling Uh, dude like he he supplied the library of congress with like all of their earliest recordings of american folk music really cool stuff He just like hopped in a car and drove all over the deep South recording people. He's actually, do you remember the movie Cadillac records or maybe Mm. about muddy waters? Mm -mm. I think he's portrayed in that. Like he he's in a few movies or like not him particularly, but like they show this guy showing up on like some sharecroppers, farm in mississippi and be like hey are you blind willie whoever like, i don't yeah. think i saw that oh dude it's a really good movie beyonce like that, right and beyonce yeah and adrian brody brody yeah. it was really good the soundtrack for it is incredible they did a really good job and adrian brody plays uh the chess records dude Mm-hmm. he's the one that started the uh, folklore history deal with uh, your boy. Oh, really? Yeah, I can see that. They both profited, or one of them profited greatly off, off, <laughs> off of this music. That's cool. The other just became like a, he was kind of like an academic. Lomax. Uh, Lomax? Yeah, that's what it seemed like. It seemed like it. Yeah. That's why I thought of the Maester just like, like driving around. The music. He didn't, and he like, I don't know, he, he didn't like, he could have easily started a record label and gone the way of chess records or something like that. And 
been a part of the problem. But instead, he was like just super big fan and and wanted to preserve it and thought of it like uh, in a very academic sense in that way. Like we got to preserve this for future generations, catalog it, index it, store it away. For sure. Uh, I was pulling this up because I was going to see how many of these you've actually seen. I haven't seen very many of the new shows. We've been watching movies lately. These are all the new shows that came out in 2020. Damn, that's a lot. I was going to see, like, starting, like, these are 2019, but everything above here, 2020. I've seen... Uh, oh, we watched Cheer. And, I haven't seen that. Oh, um, is it the net Netflix one? Let's see. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It is. So, what is this? Incredible. I uh, I didn't think it would be great, but uh, like it is a fascinating portrayal of this, um, like JUCO in Texas's cheer squad that oh, wins so like, like cheer nationals. Yeah, and there's particularly this one guy named Jerry that comes through as being having this great story about like overcoming all of this hardship in his life and like finding a wonderful, like adopted family. And it just came out that he was like arrested for raping all these kids and having all this child. Oh, Jared. No, oh, that's exactly Jared. what I said. I was like, Oh, Jerry, six, six episodes. What you doing, Jerry? Huh? You know what Jared's doing. How many? Yeah. Guys? So there's only six episodes in the whole season. It's like a mini series. Yeah, like they're probably not gonna. It was fascinating though, man. You would really like it for having more than six episodes before. Uh, uh, no, up that hobby. I'm sure, like they were like, we're gonna have a second season, um, and maybe they so, like COVID happened. I think so. <clears throat> that's what they said. Well, all this didn't come out until like a couple weeks ago. Like, we're going to have 12 episodes this season. Je Je no, no, no. It six. wraps up. We're going to have six. Actually, COVID. COVID happened. It wraps it up. No, it's, a, like, it's intentionally six okay, cool. There's six episodes. Like, I think Sherry it, would like it. Her sister the did, uh, show had been and done National for a long time. And stuff. The show had been, her, yeah, she would love it. And it's like, you, you would like it a lot, too. I didn't think I would like it, and I ended up loving it. I'm sure I'll like it. I like all these I would, shows. I would check this out. Okay. So. But now uh, I've told you that Jerry's a child diddler, so that kind of sucks for you. I know you spoiled um, that. I, I would have had to gotten the surprise on that one, but now I. I watched I, a couple uh, episodes of. I won't uh, tell Charity. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll wait until the end to surprise her. That way she gets the same experience everybody else did. I definitely watched an episode, the first, like the pilot of Messiah. And then I was like, oh, this is ridiculous. I'm not watching this. That's is that what she did after uh, the Walking Dead? Uh, I think so. Um, and then I watched an episode of Dracula and really liked it, but never got back to it because I'm. I watched I watched all of Dracula. I might have watched more than one episode of this, but oh, still, this isn't this is Michelle Monaghan. This isn't who I thought. I like Michelle. Yeah. Monaghan. It was uh, so. This is Jesus. The Jesus is this like the the trilogy? This is the third installment. It's in a guy that comes the back. Big about he's and, Jesus. This is and his he's son. saying he's Jesus, and the U.S. federal government arrests him, and the CIA agent is like, said, "Hey, I'm John Turturro's son. Stop." It wasn't great. It. I stopped watching it pretty soon. I maybe watched one, two episodes. He said, "Don't fuck with the Jesus." What's its rating? It has a decent rating. 75. I mean, yeah. it's, Maybe it's not terrible. Yeah, you'll have to circle circle back on that one. I watched uh, The Outsider. That all of Dracula, crazy. dude. Dracula, you need to watch Dracula. Dracula, cool. it was good. I like that. So I've, I've seen them all, I know. Come on now. Okay, well, untrack it. 
Yes, yeah, stop tracking it. Okay, now let me see the picture. There you go, Dracula. Uh, yeah. Oh, what's his name? They. St- I don't. Uh, oh, I, I did watch the first. Last bang. Watch the second or third. He was in that orange. Uh, that new. That new movie yeah, that just I came haven't out. I watched that. Uh, oh, the great or the great orange uh, jumpsuit or something like that. I don't know what it was. And everything, not just my stuff. Everything. It is. There it is. The burnt orange heresy. The burnt orange heresy. Yeah. Yeah. I it's his most recent feature. Yet. I heard that was good though. Yeah, Mick Jagger's in it, and I hate it when he acts. So I was like, nah. You think he sings? You think he's just like? No, he's just a terrible actor, and he has wanted to be an actor since the '60s. And so he'll like throw money at a production and be like, put me a part in it. In it. And it always feels so pigeonholed in that it ruins the rest of the movie. He's not, they didn't list him on here, at least as a producer. He probably said not to, he just said, list me as an actor only. Yeah, maybe he paid extra. He probably didn't read over uh, I'm sure real goods true. listings. No one's going to give Sir Mick a bad review and print at I know. the very least. But like, not with a picture like that. He is a terrible actor. At that age. Which is crazy because like he's, I don't know, being the front man of the Rolling Stones is a little bit of an act in itself. You'd think he'd be a little better at it. Uh, well, we'll all have to see. We'll all have to see how good like how, he is. I like Brandon. In with the Burn Brandon Warriors. Stoker's uh, headshot. <laughs> I know. No, well, see somebody from like the 1800s. Like I next was going to say that. Yeah, he. Uh, he <laughs> like a guy, a obviously writing. at Comic Con. He got a writing credit <laughs> on it. <laughs> he's uh, he he's like uh, Stan Lee. Yeah. And uh, they just digitally put him in as a cameo in it. I wonder if you pull up uh, one of the one of the nuns. I wonder if you pull up. Oh, brother, where art thou? If they have like Homer, but it's like photo missing. That's an Easter egg when you watch it in the final episode. Bram Stoker uh, cameos as one of the nuns in the background. Like the bartender. If you look, he's the oh, only one with a beard. Okay. Yeah. You have, I've watched at least to where he makes it to the mon- or the nunnery. So that might be the second episode. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Spoiler alert on Bram Stoker in there, too. It so feels like it was a, years ago, but that was earlier this year that I watched that. That's insanity. It was a good one. It, I know. It does seem like a long time ago. Uh, the Outsider was good. Watch that. It was very trippy. Ooh, I, I want to watch that one. We need to see right, Vampire's one. Ottoman. It's on my watch list, but I have not watched it yet. Which one? Uh, the Rise of Empire. Oh, I did watch that one. I have not watched that, that yet, but I want to. It it was good. So, did you watch the uh, like Rome yes. ones before that? I, oh yeah, I've watched even the terrible stuff they have about Rome. The so this one's a really good one, and they pick all uh, like Turkish, Syrian, cool. it seems like descent, or you know, at least somewhere in the Caucasus area. Yeah, it's it's not like uh, the Last Samurai or anything. Yeah, Tom Cruise is in it, but at least he's not. <laughs> he also the yeah, main he character. <laughs> Like, there were no they at least used his son instead of him as the main character. No, it's really good though, and they they because of how they shoot these, they have the experts from wherever they're mm-hmm. selling it have like them do all the voiceovers explaining strategically what was going on around them while they're doing the library enactments and stuff. Yes, so they can apply it anywhere, and they can actually shoot using the people from the place that they're telling the story about which is always annoying when they whitewash it because they have to have them talking 
the only cool job you can do is a doctor, doctor, like a, or a classicist with a doctorate. That'd be a cool job. Oh yeah. Like I had a Latin teacher in college that, uh, was a like consultant on the HBO series Rome. Oh, that was a good series. His job was just to make sure there were no grammatical errors in any of the graffiti. Oh, dude. Was that like a volunteer deal or did he Uh, He like knew someone who was also working on it for like continuity and, and, uh, like mm-hmm. other like editing like historical editing accuracy mm-hmm. like because it's kind of a small community so he got, he did he got the hook up in there yeah so his friend like hooked him up and he came on and and just there were so many people working on the latin there like it it's all the latin you see in the hbo series rome is a hundred percent like accurate it's really fascinating they did a better job than i mean the catholic church does sometimes most times oh, well they're they're pretty well, thorough they've been a pretty their, decent their accuracy uh, is deeper of that flame language reliable language speaking of the meister the uh the maester hunters was amazing citadel which one hunters? hunters i really liked hunters like it's like have the, you seen Al have you seen Chino the mind playing? Of... Oh, sorry. Where? No, you're good. Have you seen the mind of Aaron Hernandez? Yes. Holy shit! And the documentary, or I mean, the uh, podcast, the HBO or the ESPN Thirty for Thirty podcast about him. It's very good. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard it's that. His high school, like quarterback, it's just like yeah, we we were fucking. She's like, just, oh, you wait, wait till he's dead to say all this crazy shit about him. But I don't. Kind of like, I mean, he was a murderer, and he had yeah. crazy bad CTE, apparently. Yeah, I mean, you think about the position he played, and the type of beating that you take over and over in that spot. Yeah, I mean, it's the repetitive stuff. It's not even like the you got your bell rung hit that is worrisome over time. It's just like, just the contact you make off the line over and over and over and over again. Like that, your brain's sloshing up against the front of your skull. And that is not great for you, apparently. The more we learn about it, the the scarier a lot of these like heavy contact sports, uh, you know, seem and are, you know, like if I had a, a son, I don't think I'd let him play football. The more you know. Like, I mean, if he showed any promise in the classroom, if he didn't, I'd be like, get out, get out there. Get out there, Buckethead. Go to work. Hit somebody. Earn me a signing bonus. I like Dave, but I've always liked little Dicky. I think he's uh, clever. I do like little Dicky. It was awkward as hell. Some of it was like so cringy that... I didn't enjoy it, but I still like overall liked the show. I really, I liked that show. I thought it was really good. I thought it was funny. I thought it made uh, me uncomfortable a few times, but that's good. Like I like it now, Mel. <laughs> I, I might think I probably know what you're talking about. Uh, but I think that if you've listened to his raps, you probably know kind of what you'd be expecting. Yeah. Oh, no, I knew he was going to talk about his dick like 90% of the time. Like, it did not disappoint. I I liked uh, the, like, the hype man, uh, like, side story. I thought that was very good. Yeah, he was good. Gata. Gata. Gata's unfortunately struggling with some mental illness. I know that was cool. I like how they showed that. They do a good job of, which is my favorite uh, take on mental illness. It's like, it is not your fault. You're crazy. But no. your your responsibility to stay on top of that shit. Yeah. And everyone else's responsibility to 
be understanding with someone who's dealing with that and know that if you were dealing with everything in the world plus that, it would be, you'd be yeah. dealing with a higher level of stress than you would be otherwise. I could not imagine being schizophrenic. It would be so terrible. I mean, we live kind of in a, I mean, not a dicey area, but we live in an area where there's like a high amount of foot traffic of like street people. And so I, I meet a lot of schizophrenics and it's quite yeah. sad, man. We are and not he's dealing, dealing with, with, he's, uh, I, dealing with bipolar, I think is what he was dealing with more. Yes. He, he was bipolar. I wouldn't like any t type one, type two, I would hate to be bipolar. It'd be horrible. Yeah. But he was more in the mood spectrum. It, it, schizophrenia. That is a hard one to imagine. Cause the, like the stuff we see in pop culture has been like a beautiful yeah. mind and it's always like a like, genius uh, level person dealing with it. Like a it's savant cool. schizophrenic. Dude, it's just like, I hear people arguing. I'm actually, like, yeah. maybe working for the CIA. <laughs> I'd like to see the one about the guy in Oklahoma City who's like down under the overpass and they just have the camera on him, like in between his sleeping bag and the corner of the concrete over there and whatever he's drawn with his fingernail or what's left of it over there between when he's awake and not. Yeah, there's a fine line between batshit crazy and uh, genius, but I don't mean like you could tell a whole story and just cut back to that. I haven't met many of the the underpass Michelangelos, but I have seen a lot of the uh, like. I'll hear an argument. I'm like, damn, those three people are really going at it. And then I'll go like look outside, and it's like one really crazy guy. <laughs> like, right. And I don't, th I guess you're not supposed to say crazy, but really mentally ill person going through it. And I feel bad for him, but you can't call the cops because they might shoot him. And it, worst case, I mean, best case scenario, they'll put him in jail and for like disturbing the peace or something. And we shouldn't criminalize mental illness. Uh, and put him to work in a camp. Yeah, finding a yeah. Build Angola. An Angola esque camp. <laughs> I I think it'd be hard to do even basic manual labor when you're dealing in the throes of a, uh, I mean, manic episode. I mean, manic. If they're on the upswing, they could probably. We're talking schizophrenic. We're not talking manic here. You keep hopping back into Sorry. into into bipolar. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, but yeah, it'd be hard if you're in the throes of any severe mental illness. Uh, Except for the I manic think, person. I think the manic person would be a great addition to any team. That's kind of what I was thinking. I'm Until thinking that, if anything, the manic would be put to work, especially yeah. in a camp like that. I think that, unfortunately, they might stir insight. And <laughs> a lot of ideas. A lot, a lot of talking, <laughs> a lot of ideas, a lot of like, hey, why are we the ones over here doing this? Yeah. And they're the ones right. over there sitting around talking about us doing it. Mm -hmm. you know? I have a revolutionary new way to harvest radishes. Like Nash, stop it. We got all these stop great ideas. There. No one's listening to me. It's like I got a beautiful mind over here and nobody <laughs> pays attention to me. God I'm damn it. I think, you know what I think we could do? We could have Russell Crowe play like an older Nash and this is what happened oh, after wait, Nash, didn't go so Nash, well. Nash did get really old. And he's got the proper build for it now, too, to where he can play, like, underpass homeless schizophrenic as far as Russell Crowe goes. almost has the finances for it. He's been selling a lot of stuff on the internet. <laughs> yeah, right? John Nash. He sells his left hand or glove. And his jockstrap. And, Gladiator. But I think what we could do is we could have it be uh almost like he's waking up from a dream where he's working in slave labor on in a prison farm oh, yeah. and but he's really like a genius who was locked up by the cia i love how interested you've become with the prison farm system well, I think that because we were brought back to it, it <laughs> needs, needs to be a part of the sequel to A Beautiful Mind. I mean, it, yeah, I'm, in, I'm into it. I'd watch. It's like Beautiful Mind 2, a mind with more beauty to show. Yeah, but I don't think John Nash ever ended up in a prison work camp.
Like, God damn it, Nash, stop talking to everybody else and just get to work on the hay. If anything, they locked him up and some like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. shocked him a bunch. That was how they treated mental illness for a very long time in this country. Nash, where do you keep finding that booze? I don't know how you keep finding alcohol out here in the fields, but you need to stop <laughs> drinking. God damn it, Crow. I mean, Nash. It's like, look, man, I, I'm either going to have clandestine meetings with my CIA handler that doesn't exist, or I'm hitting this gin hard. Right? If you're going to keep them from getting to me, I'm going to try to communicate with them in other I've, ways. I've watched I'm going to get creative. It makes so, me feel like I, I, it's been a quarantine year, so it's like I've seen McMillian. So you feel, <laughs> you sound like you're rationalizing over there. <laughs> Dave, Dev. I definitely saw McMillian. Dude, McMillian's. McMillian's. McMillian's was nuts. I knew that was rigged. That was so crazy. I'm glad. You know it was rigged? I, I, like, I always have said that, like. How much did you know? Well, I never won anything that wasn't, like. I've never known anyone that's won anything like significant from this and this is a contest i feel like if you did if you did know somebody who had won something life. significant from this you would have also won something significant from this exactly. because you would have been in the the crew like the i think they won every prize larger than like 500 dollars uh in yeah, like a solid small airtight group. setup for sure yeah like i don't know anyone that got a mcdonald's jet ski or anything so I always figured it was rigged and I moved a lot growing up. So it's like, you would think, uh, someone would have won this McDonald's. Like you would have heard, I, you hear like, oh yeah, well he won the lottery, uh, or whatever, but I've never heard, uh, oh yeah, that guy won a jet ski or a million dollars from the McDonald's monopoly. No, and I was Although, looking for all over the country. I heard the same rumor, like urban legends. They're like, "Yeah, the guy that owns that car dealership got a gerbil stuck up his ass." And then I move here, and they're like, "You hear about that furniture guy?" Uh, it's it's crazy though. I never. I remember this is the one that I always really wanted to play. It's one that I feel like was super uh, enticing for children. Uh, because when we when it first started, we were like fourteen or I'm thirty two. Like we were way younger than driving like age. I was a a little kid, man. Like this, I think I was still in Tulsa, so it was like before eighth grade. Yeah, I was born in nineteen eighty eight. This started when I was like two. Oh, really? Yeah, or That's like crazy, maybe though. before that. Like, um, I think. Right? No, I think you're. I think it goes back pretty far. It says '90s. I was thinking the late '90s. I was thinking it was probably. No, I, I remember it up. Seeing, McMillions. We're going. We're, when we're, I was uh, in high school, I had a friend that worked at McDonald's, and we would all go meet up there and like bother him while he was working, and play the McDonald's uh, Monopoly thing. Like everyone would buy like one or two things he would straight up steal cups and like wrappers and boxes for us with so we could get more tickets and i never got anything more than like a free mcdouble or a coke for sure and we were like playing the system like we were doing it unfairly like pooling 10 people's effort and we never got a jet ski so the scam took place between 89 and 2001 yeah so... like my whole life That's crazy. I didn't even realize it went back that far, but yeah, I just remember ch seeing him when I was younger and I was like, Oh dude, this would be so cool. I yeah. wish I ate at more McDonald's. I'm glad. <laughs> like I after I saw I how many you get like per happy meal, I was like, God damn, I'm going to have to house some food to get on the game board. Well, I remember how aggressively I like to play Monopoly. Game pieces. It's like, Oh, if you don't like, they had remember they used to let you like super chart or super size and that has fallen out of favor but they used to be like hey do you want a a horse's size feeding trough full of fries it comes with eight tickets and so people would buy like the largest size because like your chances of winning uh 
went up with the amount of calories you were ordering from these people. I know. And I, I knew I didn't have the willpower to put down the food that was required to compete. It's crazy. It that was Mark very Wahlberg defeating. Was and then you see that you different. couldn't have. I wonder how many people died like trying to win this game with no real hope that you could ever win just from intake. Like there should be a combination documentary of McMillions and uh, uh, who only a McDonald's. <laughs> super size me. Yeah. It goes super, su- super McMillion size me. He is the David Blaine of, uh, and you tracked down all the people that died. Morgan Spurlock is the David Blaine of documentarians. You think we could do a class action with all the families of the people who died of uh, calorie intake from the McDonald's. scam of the McMillions? I crew? think like, entire countries have tried do a documentary on it. Like action against McDonald's, and it hasn't worked out. That's like you dude, think they oh already tried God. this. Going against You're the right. gold market, You're right. they court. already tried it. Do you have enough money? Hmm. Even like it would have to be the largest class action lawsuit ever. In my plan is to make the documentary, not to successfully pull off a class action against McDonald's. <laughs> you would <laughs> you need mis- you mistake my intention. So to my intention is the documentary. The uh, the class action calls and discussions with everybody. If it works, I'm supportive of it. If they killed a whole bunch of people, but I think it would just be funny to do a documentary. <laughs> about that and yeah. like only Ooh. eat like non McDonald's the whole time throughout. Maybe. Ooh, yeah. Which or only eat McDonald's and just dude, watch uh, the documentary and wither away <laughs> throughout yeah, the documentary the not talking about it. You have to join the lawsuit. That's how it would be a combination of like the Spurlock deal. Cause it would be I, like, it would accidentally seep into your life where you're like, I mean, we can grab fries wherever you're all the time anyway, man. I'm thinking by the end of it, you're we get like, the executive producers from uh, Intervention, the A&E show, and do like mm-hmm. half Intervention, half Morgan Spurlock. And then what you're describing is like throw in like a little bit of a John Grisham novel. Like yeah. what's the one where uh, Matt Damon, who's the, the miracle worker? The Rainmaker. Rainmaker, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and- miracle, miracle worker. Now, that's how the attorneys. <laughs> Water, Helen. What is it called? It's called the the miracle worker. That's what they call it. Up, no, it's called Rainmaker. It's about making money. No, nah, I think it's called the miracle worker. Pretty sure it's called the miracle worker. The yeah, saint or something. It, it, I don't remember. They could have called it the miracle worker if all of his clients didn't die by the end of the film. Lawyer walks on Danny water. Danny DeVito even died. Oh no, he, Danny DeVito's character lived. He's still alive. Well, Janet DeVito's alive. I'm saying the character he was playing. He he yeah, also he lived. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I think he actually passed the bar at the end of the movie. Yes, he did. And got to start practicing All four for the eleven. Youngin. So uh That's cool Marky Mark was the uh executive producer of that. I did not know. You know he blinded uh, a Korean man while screaming Korean hate slurs. They didn't talk about that on there. No, they didn't. He's doing all this good work to make up for it. Uh, Devs. All this good work against McDonald's. Devs is really good. Uh, Plot Against America was creepy, but very good. Unorthodox was good. I tried to watch Devs. Devs. I like Devs. I thought that was really well, well done. It was out there. Like, it was... You really got to watch it. It's kind of hard to follow. A lot of uh, got to get in there. Yeah, it's it's sort of like uh, I don't know. It has like elements of a who's the guy that did uh, like Inception and oh Chris yeah, Nolan. Uh, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, it's kind of got like a Christopher Nolan vibe to it. Okay. Yeah, it was. I, we started the first episode. It was very existential. Yeah, it, it's like a a thought experiment. I thought it was neat. It's very philosophical. There you go. Okay. We'll we'll continue. A neat exploration of the human condition. 
the plot against America was eerie, a uh, little on the nose, considering you know what we're going through now. Uh, yeah, see, fascism comes. They released America. it. It's good. That was great. Apparently, it's uh, based upon a novel. I should probably read it. I don't really read novels that much anymore, though. Good cast, good little base yeah, cast John here. Yeah, Turturro is one of my favorite actors. Not like a really big cast. It doesn't look like Zoe like just follows that family as well. Yeah, it's uh, I forget who plays Charles Lindbergh, but he's really hateable. This guy, right? Morgan Spector. No, Morgan Spector is like the dad of of this family. Hmm. Uh, I don't see who says is. Charles Lindbergh. They don't really show him much. His wife is more prevalent in the movie hmm. part in the show than he is. I thought that was great. I highly recommend. Okay. Uh, Little Fires Everywhere I've not watched, but I hear it's wonderful. Um, it just seems like a I watched lot. the first episode of that. That was really good. I like so... Big Little Lies. <laughs> right? I feel like yeah. they should get like there's so many shows that involve the word little. Yes. And I feel like they're all like big little liars. Yes. Big little like, lies. Yeah, it's it's a little lot of liars. It, like it was uh like little very fires. emotionally tumultuous. So I was like, yeah, I don't I don't need that right now. It was intense for sure. Yeah, very stressful. Talks about moving a lot uh when you're Conflict. young. Conflict yeah conflict and like passive aggressiveness it's kind of it's cool because it shows two conflicting lifestyles and parenting styles and shows you the outcomes of both of them in the children's behavior which was really cool and they really focused on it in the first episode which i really liked i'm gonna have to uh give it a give it a watch me and S sagan is on fall break so she and i will probably you know be looking for something i'll turn that one on uh, i've not watched feel good or motherland i watched tiger king with the rest of the country yeah that shit's crazy um, speaking of oklahoma yeah that was absolutely insane but everyone who lives around here kind of knew like i had heard he murders tigers and shit uh, Unorthodox was really, really great. She plays, she's like in a uh, Hasidic Jewish community um, in a marriage she doesn't want to be in. She doesn't enjoy, like, I mean, she just wants out. And so she runs away to Germany because uh, Germany has a deal where if like you, your family had to flee because of the Holocaust, you can come back and we'll give you citizenship. Uh, and so she goes and takes advantage of that, becomes a German citizen and tries to enroll in a music school in Berlin. It's a really, really fascinating story. And I mean, I like the, the, the kickoff, like a Jewish woman fleeing to Germany. Yeah, from Brooklyn to Berlin. From, and Jew from Jewish people. Apparently they had like a lot of... Uh, I learned a lot about the Orthodox community that I, I didn't know about. The hats are so expensive. Like the mink fur hats they, they wear are so expensive. Uh, I mean, that shouldn't be my takeaway, but it was, uh, <laughs> they, they, I, I found that fascinating. Um, I mean, that was the main thing, that and the shoes and the coats. I didn't really pick up on much else. I mean, it's a very uh, patriarchal society and ins insular and like they don't want you like consuming like media and things that are like, you know, I mean, they dress like they're like the Amish of the, the Jewish. They're not Luddites or anything, but they are trying to keep a way of life alive. And, but they're also kind of not cool to women or children in terms of I wonder if our standards, our standards. They probably didn't watch the movie then. Well, there was a lot of people who have left the Orthodox community that were involved uh, in making it. There was a good uh, like bonus um, that Netflix did, like a behind the scenes deal. 
like cool 20, that. 20 minute documentary. I thought it was neat. Yeah, that was cool. I thought that was. I a, like how uh, they do that. It's like bonus features on a DVD. Yeah, I'm I I'm scared that, or I was scared that we were going to lose the DVD bonus features like uh, commentary and things. Mm-hmm. And they definitely don't have as much of that. Netflix is ahead of the curve in terms of the streaming services and like offering bonus material for sure. I want I want I want them to put uh, scripts like on audible and like screw oh, plays yeah. on audible uh so there's a website can... I'll, I'll find i've got it in my bookmarks but it had like you can look up any movie and find the screenplay for it i know i'd, I'd send that to me for sure but i i'd love one where you could hear oh, like the like the a writer movie. yeah or like a, a narrator probably through audible or one of those other places we could have ed kemper uh probably <laughs> knock knock a few of them out yeah he's like hold on i've got a few before i gotta go to chow you know i could probably schedule something on a thursday <laughs> uh, mm. anything's possible right i watched a little bit of tales from the loop but like i never was in like a place where i was trying to pay attention when i was watching that one and so and it's a lot so I never got past the first episode. Live above the loop. So this is like yeah, sci-fi. It's, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's sci-fi, but in a uh, like a real like early aughts like indie kind of has like that kind of feel. Like uh, what's the one where uh, Frodo can't sleep? Lord of the Rings? No. Uh, oh. Where Frodo can't sleep. Uh, right. Oh, like where Elijah Wood can't sleep? Yeah. Hmm, I didn't watch that one. That's like a deep cut on Elijah Wood there. Uh, hold on. I'm looking it up. It's, where he can't sleep. It's not when he can't sleep. It's like a dream movie, though, for sure. Hmm. Uh, but this one's like a eternal like a surreal is eternal sunshine he's not in that i don't think yeah he is that's jim carrey and uh i think it's eternal sunshine rose elijah yeah he's totally in it it, it has like an eternal sunshine kind of feel what was he in that i don't even remember him in that uh he's like i i really i don't know i need to rewatch that i was asking sherry if she had seen that and she'd seen it a long time ago i feel like that movie i feel like that movie is one that would like really mess you up like once you're in like a deep relate like in a marriage in a, a deep relationship yeah, try not like to watch like, like that. Thinking like, about erasing someone from it's your the one, like, it's mind. just like Leonardo DiCaprio in a horrible marriage. They just scream at each other for two hours. We talked about that one, yeah. Uh, it was a street name that I never want to live on. Yeah. Revolutionary Road. A street that uh, shall not be named. If you speak its name, it'll manifest itself. I feel like I should give Taylor. I thought I lived. I thought I lived on. Oh God! Another chance. Apparently, it's like. I mean, there's a lot of great actors in it. Yeah, I was about to say I like that guy. Yes, and I like the guy in the on in the next episode as well. It's interesting. Some of them don't have, like, it won't show all the actors and stuff. Come on, real good. I'm a big fan. I'm promoting. Come on, get these updated. Yeah, Let's please. See. I need some headshots. I'm more of a face guy. Uh, Miss America, I haven't watched that one. Last Dance, I have Oh, Midnight Gospel, dude. I watched Miss America. Did you really watch good. that? Midnight Gospel? Have you oh, watched I watched Midnight Gospel. I watched a little bit of it. You had to finish this. This was... I, I like really, really like this. I went and saw him at the Would you say you like to have a chuckle? No, I like Duncan Trussell. I feel like I... Oh, oh. Duncan Trussell, yeah. I spend too much time with like tripping people that I don't like tripping media. 
I feel like it's cool more because of what he's doing with it. Yeah. I really liked the, uh, the way that he's taken like his podcast clips and okay. basically done a really comprehensive animation of it and had the different people like it's it's hard to have a conversation like that like shown visually and yeah i feel like thinking through like a tripping mind is the only way to really try to interpret that it needs to be kind of abstract yeah i'm definitely going to give it another shot everyone said it was wonderful and I'll, i and i think duncan trussell is awesome i think he's really funny i think he's insightful so I'm sure it's great. Interesting. I think I, can, I totally you're, understand like, where you're coming from. Stuck in the house during, like, when it came out during quarantine, I was like, "Yeah, I, I'm not in the right headspace for this." Um, I've seen Let's episodes see. of the L Word, the old one, back in the day when I would stay up late and watch uh, HBO trying to see a boob. You know, I know that's yeah. what I was thinking. That's when I turned. I don't remember any of it. I was like, I, I think know. that was I one that I thought was point, point, but I could draw you a couple pair of the boobs I saw. Last like, thing, there is awesome. not as much nudity in this as I was hoping for, but I'm learning a lot about women right now. Yeah, you know, inadvertently, in relationships. I watched any of those? Oh, Solar Opposites. I watched that. I watched. I know this is or this much is true. I watched. Wait, what's so? Solar opposites. No you told you, no you told me about solar we opposites. Talked about really this good. One. Uh, a, like a funny cartoon about. I think it was made sure by one. one of the guys that did Rick and Morty. Really? Yes, like the one that voices Rick, Justin Rowland. Um, and he and like. A few of the yeah. animators did Solar Opposites. It's really interesting. It's like a, or it's funny. A alien family comes to Earth, has to pretend to be normal while this uh, pupa gestates that's supposed to take over Earth. Oh, nice. I like. Okay, cool. It's a good time oh. suck. Uh, See, not deterred by any stretch of the imagination invader zim i've never heard of this one this is another one he did invader that zim was year. like uh all Some of movie? the kids in my middle school and high school that wore like black hoodies uh in the summertime and with the hood up and would never make eye contact loved invader zim i don't go I hood say, up but i'm a man who will wear a hoodie year round yeah, go hood down. I don't. I'm not a big hood up guy. And I lived in California, hood up on, a, so on a white guy is not a good look. It's not like it was super hot, but still, it was. I I wasn't wearing a, a hoodie in August in Bakersfield, especially when you have a white hood. You know, white hood on a white guy is not. <laughs> no, they were all black hoodies. These were Hot Topic people. You bought the Invader Zim stuff at Hot Topic. Okay, well, I'll probably. Maybe it was good. Over, I always remember those kids being smart. It was like what school shooters watched before school shooters were that common. <laughs> okay. I'm just kidding. I don't think that. I, I, I don't think that's true. You don't uh, think they were inspired by that, really? No, not at all. Uh, Snowpiercer was a really good movie, and I watched a few episodes <laughs> of, the, of the show and was like, eh, yeah, it seems like it's just a long, like a tedious. Yeah, they just like, were like, all right, we're going to do this two hour movie. But we're gonna make it eight hours. It's like remember how? Yeah, remember how there was a two-hour movie about the eight compartments? What if we have like eight, eight compartments, two-hour episode. episodes, and yeah. each compartment two hours long? I was immediately like, no, that is the a lot of a lot of sitting, a lot of sitting, a lot of talking. That is a bad idea. I can't believe like I can't believe that got greenlit. Like, why didn't they just like license Snowpiercer and show it once a week? Like. I think they already did that, and they were like, "This is, I mean, I think we've bled you, this for everything it has. Whoever uh, we AMC can't do it does not have their finger on the pulse." So oh, is it I, AMC show? Yeah. 
Okay. So there's only three episodes? Yeah, and it was dog shit. I mean, it actually I wonder if it got canceled or if they like planned it like that. I'm not sure. I didn't watch all three of them. I watched the first one and was like, yeah, this seems like it's going to be not fun. I already watched the movie. Why don't I watch just like a longer version of the movie that can't say fuck? So do you think it was a sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, really? It was the exact same time. They didn't even like make it interesting by being like, oh, prequel to the events. I watched Stargirl. I don't know why. I think I was. Just- I did too. Uh, I didn't think it was terrible. I mean, it was terrible. Like it, but it's. <laughs> I watched know? multiple episodes. <laughs> I watched all of it. Uh, I watched like the I whole made thing. it all the way. I made it all the way to this episode before I had to wonder, stop. I know I made it, it here. This it is made the chick that it, was like the photographer. <laughs> It was so bad I couldn't stop watching. And I was like, is Luke Wilson doing this like court ordered? Like, did he get a DUI? And they're like, now you have to make this horrible children's show. I think I think you're right. I think I signed on for Luke Wilson. I, I think I was like, I mean, he didn't do horrible stuff. Yeah. I was like, worst case, I was like, okay, it's it's like a, he was in the Madoff scheme or something, and he's doing like a Kevin Bacon. Who just knows, man? It, rake some it, money back in. It did, I liked it. I I I kept watching it because I was like, where? How low is he going to go? Like watching someone debate right. themselves is amazing. And how much are they going to talk about the Justice Society of America? Is what I want to know. Like how far are they? I liked it when they're going throwback and talking about. Uh, the original. They the kept OGs. It on brand all the DC movies, like any anything, all the DC stuff kind of sucks compared to the Marvel stuff. And this is right on brand with that. So I watched, uh, I've been watching Titans. I don't know if you've seen that. What's Titans? Uh, I'll pull it up. It's uh, DC, like from. You remember Teen Titans? Oh, yeah. When we were growing up? Yeah. So uh, it's those it's those comics. They did no, live action. It's, and it's like really, it's rated R, TVMA. So it's oh, like it dark. I'll it's really good, that. though. Yeah, I haven't watched any of that. Check <laughs> it out. Flash, it was not good either. I watched The Flash. I watched a bunch of The Flash, uh, but this is like... I liked Luke Cage a lot. And the Flash, if, if it was rated R, okay. and it had a film budget. Okay. I like Because it's like exclusive only to DC Universe subscription. They can make it Uh-oh. on a high budget, and it was a production for them. Okay. I'll definitely check it out. But that's a good one. And then, let's see... I watched the Epstein thing. I watched Space Force. I watched I May Destroy You because I like that girl. She's in another show. I can't remember what it was, though. It was like a BBC show. Which one? She was hilarious in it. I May Destroy You. Hang on just a second. Where are you at? Oh. Space Force. I I can't get Charity to watch this because she doesn't like. British people who talk with that lower British accent where they're like, I, 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 I. Yeah, like, oh my like, God, damn it, I can't listen to this anymore. I'm like, it's you, you don't, you're not a fan of Snatch or anything. She's not a big Guy Ritchie fan. Uh, she's uh, been another show to get her to watch. Really interesting. Like, I liked, uh, I watched like during college. I forget what it was called though. Um, but that sold me on, on that. I haven't watched all of it. I watched like the first couple episodes and I thought it was interesting. So what is it about? Uh, South Shore, London, with a group of great friends. A boyfriend in Italy, burgeoning writing career. But when a drink spike, she yeah, must question she- the rebuild every element of her life. So she got roofied, huh? Got fucking roofied. Yeah, a wee bit. That's crazy. I'm not even a wee bit, like just straight zonked. Straight up? Yeah. That's an interesting segue from the Epstein uh, documentary. Yeah, he wasn't really... His aphrodisiac was not drug. It was money. It was like, hey, I, he didn't 
drug anyone. He was just like, hey, do you want a bunch of money? And maybe I'll get you a modeling contract. And hey, allegedly, massage he allegedly didn't penis. drug anybody. Yeah. Massage my egg shaped penis. Yeah, they they really I love the way that they went after him on that. Like once he knew that he was just buying time until the attorney got oh, there, yeah. until he called for attorney and stopped talking. He was just like, hmm. Oh my God, I've watched. How can we jab this guy? We got some weird information that the women have said about his dick. We could we could try that out. I've done... Space Rat. Force is good. Ratch. Oh yeah, Space Force. Uh, I've done Perry Mason, Tehran, I'll Be Gone in the Dark. A lot of the Unsolved Mysteries. What's this one? What's the I'll Be Gone in the Dark one? Uh, it's a really good book by Michelle McNamara. Uh, who oh, yeah, yeah, Adam yeah. Oswald's wife about the Golden mm -hmm. State Killer. And she posited that he could be caught using genetic genealogy, and he ended up being caught shortly after her death, exactly how she said he would. It was really interesting. And I like uh, genetic genealogy, I think it's super neat. Like anyone who's like, I don't want my DNA in a database, it's like, I don't know. Weirds me out. I did 23 Me, and I'd be fine with signing uh, a release for 23 Me to give my DNA to law enforcement. Because if I've got like a great uncle that was a rapist, why not bring him to justice? I think a lot of the people argue that like the people that hold your DNA and all the data on what identifies you as you yeah. might misappropriate that data because when we're paying for it on uh ancestry.com we're you know what we're getting out of it is that little bit of information what they're getting out of it is your genetic potentially yeah. yeah the ability to replicate you to any non-human like reader cool or anything you know what i mean yeah, that is kind of terrifying. Uh, I mean, that's what I'm getting through my aluminum foil right now, but I sometimes my signal's a little... You hey, know, you never know, man. Like, a dystopian corporate hellscape isn't you know too far off. It could happen. But I always assume they have all of it anyway. Yeah. And, and I'm also uh, not that important, so... I know. I feel like maybe when I get more important, I'm going to be like, God, I wish I hadn't given away so much of my DNA. Oh, dude, I've given a lot of it away for free. At least 23andMe has told me so. Uh, Speaking of giving away DNA for free, this show, Pussy Valley. Pussy Valley. Really I have not watched Did you watch that? Okay. No. I so good, dude. Okay, so. I do like Cardi one, B, and it's like. She's not in it. I know. But. I it, uh, it's based kind of loosely on a story similar to women in uh, the same industry. This one's down uh, down in the yeah, valley where the girls get naked. Oh, God. It's got a really good soundtrack, too. That did yeah. good original music. Dude, for it. oh, God. It's so hot and horrible down there. I would not want to go to a strip club and have someone put their fucking sweaty ass crack in my face. It's a hundred percent humidity. They don't. I mean, you, the way you talk, you haven't been to or seen very many strip clubs. Most of them don't go ass first. It's not like their main move. You obviously, haven't been to many. You can ask. Clubs. I mean, you, I'm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, clubs. judging by the name of the show, you can ask for them to put other things other than their ass on your face. No, no, no. There's no full nude in Mississippi. Unless well, they don't have to be nude head. for them to not put your ass, their ass in your face. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, they might but uh, it's a good show. Serve booze if you do go full nude or something like that. Do they do uh, the drive-through uh, daiquiris and stuff? Yeah, there's still some dry counties in Mississippi, but yeah, you can do drive-through booze there. What would make sense in a dry county that you also you can can't drive, do drink and some, drive in Mississippi? Like, full nudity at a strip club. Like if I go and pick up a six pack at the corner store, and I'm thirsty on my way home, I can crack one of those bad boys and drink it while I'm driving, 
And as long as I stay under the legal limit of 0.08, it's not a crime. I think I think we'll have to look into the rules a little bit more specifically on that. But I see hundred percent in the I see no in open theory law in Mississippi is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. On top of the 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 limit amount, they also don't have that open container law at all. Yeah, there's no open container law, so you can drink and drive up to 0.08. But you'd probably, I mean, it's the only they state probably have public that does have an open container law that prohibits drivers or passengers passengers from drinking inside a motor vehicle, like because back road drinking is like a thing there oh yeah and they've institutionalized it it's like all right at least the guy behind the wheel has got to stay under the limit but everybody else in the truck can get trashed you can probably get charged for public intox still mm. or drink i wonder if you can get charged for you know public, public intox, intox laws are pretty public. dubious I mean, as long as your you dick's, always... dick's not out peeing in the street you can always get charged with public intox, but once you get in front of a lawyer, or once you get a lawyer, it, nine times out of ten gets thrown out. Well, uh, this one yeah, is a, a video of you chugging a bottle of Tito's and then pissing on a cop car or something for you to actually get that charge to stick. Right. Well, they don't do any of that, and I don't even think there's full nudity in the strip clubs. Uh, there's definitely a lot of nudity. This would be more of the show we were looking for when we were watching The L Word. Yeah, The L Word. When we were younger. The, we were looking for P Valley. We were looking for another uh, letter. The Sopranos show. had like brief interludes of, of like girls at the Bing. I remember that too. Which one? The Sopranos had like brief interludes of strippers. Like girls. Yeah, and uh, Christop Christopher's wife was yeah. pretty. Risque. She flashed some titties. Adriana. Once in a while. Yeah, I watched uh, Wizards: Tales of Arcadia. That's the third in a trilogy by Guillermo del Toro. Um, that is great. I highly. They're made for kids, but I highly suggest all three. They're great. You were telling Trollville. me about this one, yeah? Trollville. Uh, the other one is like a alien thing and then this one's like merlin king arthur kind of stuff i watched curse also brave new world uh didn't was watch curse good? earth uh curse was good ted lasso is pretty funny too i haven't watched that one watched I, high I, score I, i'm i'm like not a big fan of soccer uh oh yeah yeah is it like you it's just about how he soccer. doesn't like soccer, doesn't know anything about He's soccer. He's like an American football coach that goes to coach a soccer team. It's I thought it, it was well done. You don't have to like soccer to like it. My wife does like soccer and thought she wouldn't like it because of like how much she likes soccer. And she ended up enjoying the episode we watched or she watched with me. Teenage okay. Hunters was great. Lovecraft Country is really good. High school. Wait, what about on this one? Uh where? Have you done any of these? I uh, did Brave New World. Uh, that's it. It's basically... What was this? Book. Yeah, okay. Um, but, I mean, it wasn't like anything to write home about. It's a... It's a eh. uh, okay. Race by Wolves. I just watched that. All 10 episodes. Yeah. It was good. We're not all the way through it. We're halfway through it. I'm a big fan of that one. The Vow was was crazy. Like, all those people deserve what happened to them. Uh, Ratchet was good. High score, I thought was really interesting. It's like uh, the games that made us and the toys that made us. Like, that kind of oh, vibe. Yeah. I like those, those documentaries. I need to watch that one. You would like that. Um, what about this whoa. close enough one? This is a cartoon one. I haven't heard of this. I have not watched that. Oh, see, this is this is perfect. This is like yeah. right up our alley. Yeah, what? Is, oh, it's on HBO Max. I'll have to check that out. I've not watched that at all. I haven't even heard anything about it. They're doing a bad job. I know. promoting some of these. Right. I feel like with HBO Max, you have to be watching HBO or something. 
for you to even hear about the channel. Yeah. Well, and you also have to have a compatible streaming device because we have a Amazon TV and then like an yeah. L LG television that has its own like little OS and neither of them support Max. So we have like the HBO channel. It's really weird. I like yeah, we have, uh, it didn't ratchet. work on something of mine. Uh, no oh, it's, because I had Cox, it didn't work with the PlayStation. Oh, okay. I like Ratchet. Very weird. That was one of my favorite things I've watched recently. I really like uh, one. Is that like Nurse Ratchet from yeah. uh, One Flew Over? Yeah. Yeah. Ken Kesey is one of my favorite Americans. It's like her backstory. Uh, yeah, it's like a prequel That's to crazy. um us meeting her, you know, her, in her older age. It's neat. It's really neat. She's. She's, She's a really great. good actress. I, I I wonder what the Keezy estate had to do with this. Sarah Paulson. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. met uh, Ken Keezy's kid. Uh, what was his name? Oh, something really crazy. I met him at Rothbury. Michael Douglas was one of the producers. Nice. And Sarah Paulson. Her name was Sarah Paulson. Her name was Sarah Paulson. Great actors, great actors. Uh, did you watch Warrior Nun? Uh, oh yeah, I watched a little bit of it. I don't think I finished it though. I'm not sure I what happened. Seen that one. Uh, yeah, it was neat. I like uh, aesthetically. I thought it was fascinating. Uh, Woke was really funny. I haven't seen that one. He's like a cartoonist. It has like a comic strip and then like a newspaper kind of comic strip uh, that's literally like, I think it's called butter and toast. It's like very milk toast, you know, like non-offensive. Most of his fans are like the NPR white people crowd. And he has a bad interaction with the police that makes him woke. And it's like the fallout of his life from there by like realizing like okay his own disenfranchisement it it's great i thought it was really well done it's a neat piece of social commentary away was uh an interesting way to tell a space travel story like i've never Mars. seen yeah i've never seen one uh that primarily focuses on the tether between home and there like the people on right. earth play just as much of a uh impact in the storyline as the people on the spacecraft not like apollo 13 where they just kind of like don't really flesh out the ground the people on the ground or the people behind other than like oh we miss you please don't die uh right this is more I usually only do it like you were saying on like the intro or at the end of the movie or on like cutaways of recordings that were sent to them in yeah. correspondence like on interstellar and stuff. Yeah. They never like really flesh out those characters. This is like, it, if anything, I thought that was neat that they went about it um, from a perspective that I've never seen a story like this told other than that, pretty cut and dry. We're going, you know, where no man has gone before kind of thing, right? Gotcha. We've seen portions of that movie or that show a thousand times, but never like they do it. I've not watched the Comey rule. I feel like too soon. They didn't like make a television show uh, about Watergate before Nixon flew off on a goddamn helicopter. Who do they have playing the characters? Uh, they've oh, got Brennan, that. Brennan, yeah, Brennan Gleeson. Yes, I did see. He doesn't look a whole hell of a lot like him, but he really nails the mannerism. And Jeff Daniels. I love Jeff Daniels. It's an interesting thing to reenact. Jeff Daniels. They should reenact. I wonder if they like reenact any of the other, like any of the rumored stuff in there. Like if they do. Like, they like cutaways while they're talking stuff. to like him getting pissed on. on I think the rumor bed. was that like he wasn't he watched girls pee on each other. 
I think the rumor can be whatever it's the rumor is. confirmed that he went to a strip club in Russia where he watched a piss show happen, he, he, like, once. I heard he got pissed on, okay? And it's like, man, they, in Russia, they're just, like, pissing on each other? I mean, I feel like if the price is right... In, in the old country. You can have people piss wherever you want. You can have them piss on the wall. Yeah, they can piss on your shoe. They can piss on your What's the difference between a chickpea and a garbanzo bean? Mm, I don't know what. I've never paid anyone a hundred dollars to garbanzo bean on my face. <laughs> hey, oh, <laughs> hey, or <Are> we... <laughs> uh, I don't. I haven't seen this one, Emily in Paris. This one was getting promoted a whole lot. I don't know what it I is. watched the like inadvertently. You know how the like autoplay trailers. I watched mm-hmm. the trailer to that, and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to watch this. It was, uh... Oh, wow. This is not what I thought it was. This is like a romantic like, comedy. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm an American, and I'm in Paris and refuse to speak French. Oh, merde. Merde. So, uh, we'll get... We'll circle back for that one in the Comey rule, maybe. I wonder yeah, if the Comey I've been rule... watching the new be... season of Archer. It's awesome. Archer is awesome. The new season is really good. uh, That was the main... uh, I wanted to update that, but uh, we also have, you know, the updates in Hughes News, if you want to do those before we wrap up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to eat some dinner soon so let's let's hit the we have three quick articles one on the ou football coach on his players being suspended another one on a grow up up by tulsa and the third i almost called lincoln riley at riley for a second that's very funny <laughs> i went to Matt riley's lincoln was wrecked in a uh <laughs> oh man but yeah, okay, so Lincoln, Lincoln Riley is not in in favor of the suspension of three of his players over them testing positive for marijuana. And I'm I'm with it. He called the NCAA's rule archaic. And I think that's you know, I right now there's a lot of change happening in the NCAA. Why not apply pressure here? Uh, they could cave. They're going to be paying players in the next few years. So why not let them smoke weed either? I know. And we'll have to get the NFL to change before. I mean, and I think the NFL has changed quite a bit. Uh, you know, I don't think that. What was the guy, Ricky uh, Williams? I don't think a Ricky Williams would ever happen again. Now they're just kicking right. out. That was like a depressing 30 for 30. He was like, so I uh, smoke weed. Now I live in this trailer and stuff. So he was living in I've like been, trying to re- been trying to rebuild my career now. Uh, I've definitely stopped smoking weed. Uh, <laughs> the like, NFL and the world showed me that it was a problem. Yeah, he's uh, like, now I got to go play football in Turkey. And I don't know how that worked out. I didn't, follow his, I didn't follow his career after the 30 and 30. Yeah, 30 30. I really- I really hated that that happened to him, but you know, they should have done a follow up, see if he became a coach out there or anything. Yeah, I think uh, Lincoln Riley is right on the money. I am a fan. Like OU has always had like a very uh, like every coach that I can think of uh, has always been like very you know they back their players and stuff. So, so it's, it's supposed to be a man the of the people. Right? Is what the penalty is supposed to be? Half of the season for one positive u- urinary analysis for marijuana? That's what they were saying, right? Yeah, that is what... Jesus. They're going to go back and revise it, but normally... Do you lose your scholarship while that's happening? Half the season. I'm not sure. I don't... I don't think they said it. Uh, and I'm not sure if you get compensated per, you know, game played for your, like, in credit hours. Yeah, and it's going to be a short season because some games are canceled. Are they going to, like, be like, all that's right. Why they, that's why they cut it down, I think. Okay. The rules in place mandate a suspension of half of a season for one positive test. 
that suspension would carry them through the first five games of the season in addition to the bowl game they missed. So, and like, they the NCAA increased the testing threshold from 35 nanograms per milliliter to 15. So, hmm. I mean, like, these are the numbers of people, I mean, 35 are from, these are people that aren't smoking every day. These are people that stopped smoking and started practicing with the team. Like, well, this was one where they had smoked uh, before the Peach Bowl last season, oh. and they're still dealing with the games at the beginning of this season from that penalty. Did we win the Peach Bowl? I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know. We should know. 2019. No, we got blown out by the Tigers. LSU just destroyed us, 63 to 28. So, you know. Maybe the NCAA has a point. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we would have been better if we would have had them for sure. Yeah, most uh, definitely. Well, but, uh, yeah, that's crazy that they lose half the season because they were smoking before a bowl game. Yeah, that and is it's, really crazy. And uh, you know a bunch of the players would test positive for alcohol. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, my God. They're – yeah. Like within – 24 hours of a bowl game and like I'm, I, I'm sure a really lot wouldn't it, but like i really hate the uh like you can't quantify that like you're not stoned at like you the day after you smoked you know it's bullshit like you can have like i'm sure there have been players that have shown up like with a hangover and it's still been allowed to like dress out yeah i mean they can't tell a lot of the times like and if they're good players and the rules permitted of course they would let them play and only a couple of teams in the country a year get tested i think that if the ncaa could adopt a rule and the nfl had a rule in the collective bargaining agreement where you defer to the state where they're playing in for what type of medicine they're allowed to use yeah for their medical conditions yeah and have it be like an if they're not breaking state law where they're where they're playing and living i don't understand why you know because if it's like a reputation thing and you're trying to do it for moral integrity in the nfl yeah uh, there's some other issues that you could clear up before you know whether they smoke in their spare time yeah, I could think of, you know, we were talking about Aaron Hernandez earlier. Murder is the top, top of the list. Yeah, they got, you know, little murder yeah, going on. Not, not as much anymore. He's they definitely dialed back on the murder. Cats. Yeah, gunplay of any sort, like that happens. That's no bueno. I'm just saying, it's a little, little marijuana. It's okay. Ryan Aber agrees. It's uh, not the- Oh. All three plaxicoed themselves at a club before the Peach Bowl. So he's uh, he's the sports sports guy. We don't usually hear a lot from Ryan, but uh, he covers high schools, Oklahoma City Redhawks, Oklahoma City Barons, and OU football recruiting. Nice. Uh, he's a native of Oklahoma City. We'll do we'll do a little deep dive on Ryan right here. Let's see what's going on here. He went to Northeastern East, State. Where- okay, is that Tahlequah? Where's that Northeastern? Is that Tahlequah? Yeah, that's Tahlequah. Before that, 20- uh, that Tahlequah, that, that, that up uh, at Tahlequah. Skogie Phoenix, Southwest Times record in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and the Morning News in Fayette or in Northwest Arkansas. Man, some rough beats this dude has been on. Right. So they this, they just list all of his articles. Interesting. Okay, that's fun. Short bio though, not much in the bio range. I feel like you you should do a write up on yourself if you were no, the kind great. of page they cut to. No, that's gross. Heyo, we get to hear from Lincoln. You can't really hear this, but yeah, Lincoln's not a fan. I like that. I'm not a fan. I'm I think a fan they need to change now. it. Yeah. Hopefully, like you said, once they can make money, hopefully they'll be able to pay them. And I think they should be able, dude, if they want to take an endorsement deal from raw rolling papers, I think they should be able to do it. Right. Like, 
These guys are putting their brains and bodies on the line and for like a four-year degree in sociology. Like, let the guy make some cash. He's never going to be able and, to make cash with a sociology degree. And or I'm not a doctor, but they they were talking about the how it helps with inflammation and swelling and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, yeah, it could, they, have, I, they have brain swelling. Yeah, they most certainly do. There was a there was another article here. This is my saw. favorite one. I'm really excited about this one. Illegal marijuana Tell grow me. in Depew might be Mexican trafficker handiwork. Authorities speculate. Oh, dear, speculate me. being the key word there. Where is Depew? Up there near Tulsa. Let's see. Depew. Depew. It is. It's in Creek County. Ooh, Creek County is rough. Okay, Th dude, this is so close to where I played that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is really close to the this is close to where you were earlier. The nudist colony that I oh, played. never mind. Our band once got booked to play a nudist colony, and it's uh, like right out in between uh, Depew and Stroud, like in the middle of the woods. Basically, it was a trip. It's the oldest nudist colony in the United States. It's right here in Oklahoma, near that clandestine marijuana grow. It's called something leaf, like oak leaf, naturist reserve. Oak. Fig, fig leaf. Oak, oak lake trails. Maybe. Is that by Stroud? I, th I mean, I think we're close to where Oh, it's we in the pew. I thought it was called Oak Leaf Naturist Preserve or something. They sent us an email. No, it's to in Depew. I see why you you said it was between Stroud and Depew because technically you go past Depew on your way to Stroud or whatever. But uh, yeah, you nailed it. That's yeah. Uh, it's right over it's, there. You know, small world. Oak Lake Trails Naturist Park, and we were like, oh, these are just hippies that like trees and shit. And we get out there, and it's just like a bunch of naked people. And they live out there year round. It's like an intentional community. They've got their own church, school, little general store, and they got <laughs> men, women, and children of all ages running around butt ass naked. It's crazy. How hilarious is it that when you read this and you're like, theory is that it's Mexican drug traffickers, and uh, then we they see this like running naked running. guy named Gary hopping around over in the tree line, with the, <laughs> you know, shirt off. I doubt it's Mexican drug traffickers, it. but I could be wrong. You know, I mean, Gary could have he could be half Mexican, but uh, he looks he's white. He I'm, I'd say he's a white guy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, he's nice. He doesn't have an accent. Uh, he likes Trump. I don't know. That's it's just what I'm getting from him. This illegal operation included a campsite and several indicators that resemble previous patches located by Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics involving teams of Hispanic cultivators living on site and growing for Mexican drug trafficking organizations. Like uh, Doritos, Tortillas. I, uh, I, I, uh, I didn't know that. It seems like indicators that would increase the... I guess you don't have to smuggle it if you grow it here. So maybe what do you mean? overhead down. Oh, like why they do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly. I know right. they've been doing that at like public lands in California for a long time. It just seems crazy mm -hmm. they're doing out in like Indian territory. Well, when you think about when we went over the amount of weight that's grown in California that's distributed into the black market, and you look at those overhead numbers on distribution, my first thought would be if we have to ship this from California all the way to Florida and New York all the way up and down the East yeah. Coast, it would make more sense to start, like if we're growing it illegally it in California, we yeah. might as well grow it illegally in Oklahoma in the middle of our distribution hub. That way we can send it anywhere in the U.S. we want to. That's Or, true. you know, have one back East or whatever. Yeah, you're right. That's crazy. I mean... Or it's Gary. I hate to know, stumble upon that like, while I'm out for like a hike, you know? 
Either one. I wouldn't want to stumble onto a cartel grow or Gary's oh, grow with a dick flopping around on the plants. They were very nice for naked people, you know. It'd be really fucked up to run into a bunch of really aggressive naked people. <laughs> I, how, how uncomfortable would I that make you like feel? <laughs> how like they would hold a conversation and like everyone would just come up to you and talk to you like their dick wasn't hanging out like it was so weird um but, but i think the aggressive guys would definitely talk about the fact that their dick is out yeah it, it was very strange i'm sure they would and about how it's hard and how it's your problem now. i did see a guy at a beach in california once uh over by like golden gate park and he was just like on the beach with his like aggressive ass heart on and like wrap around shades. And I was like, God damn, there's families here. What the fuck is going on? He's the only naked person. There's nobody else naked. And he was like, like jerking off at people. I was like, man, somebody should call cops. Then I went home aggressively naked. No, we went like to a, we smoked a joint and then walked around a little more. It was only a (laughs) partial uh, bummer. Smoked a joint, walked around talking about how how, like, how much how they should call the cops it on this guy. Walk around with a heart on in public. It's you know, everybody's got their vibe. It's California. Uh, maybe Gary got lost on the way to the California Grow, and he stumbled out onto the beach, and he was just like, "I gotta, I gotta take care of this. My stress levels are." I, I just really got rough. the dinner is ready. Knock. Oh, got the dinner bell. Okay. Yeah. Well, next time we'll cover the rest of these stories at the yeah, OMA. Yeah, do that. But uh, talk about metric, like that's a longer conversation. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, we got a music video from Willie Beeman by uh, Jimmy Fox. <laughs> so look forward to that. Uh, thank you for joining tonight. Uh, I'm Carter. I'm Sean. And we'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye.